Hi. Back in 2007, our daughter Carrie was 16 years old and she had received her driver's license and she was very excited to be driving herself to high school mm -hmm. and to be driving her sisters around town. <laughs> Back then, the law said that she could take her siblings with her uh, in the car as long as I wrote a note giving permission for her to drive them around. However, she was not allowed to put any of her friends in the car with her. So she knew that was the law. She made a mutual agreement with me around that limit that she would only drive her sisters in the car. Now on Fridays was off campus lunch day at mm -hmm. school. So of course I get a phone call one day saying, mommy, can me and my friend go to lunch about a block away from campus and I'm gonna put her in the car with me. We're just gonna drive there. One block. And we're gonna drive <laughs> back. And I knew at that moment she was either questioning the limit or challenging the limit or kind of trying to see if I would be consistent with the limit. And I'm going to pause the story right there and let you know what my response was to her in a few minutes. So this leads us to universal truth number nine. All children need age appropriate limits on their behavior. And this comes from our book, Parent Shift. And so what is a limit? Limits are about deciding and prescribing for another what you think is best for him. Effective limit setting mostly occurs around safety and health issues. Other types of limits may be imposed in accordance with culture, morality, or religion. And developmental stages must be taken into consideration. Limits are non-negotiable and must be reasonable. And that's the important part. They're non-negotiable and they must be reasonable. Mm -hmm. So what are guidelines for reasonable limits? Well, first guideline is it needs to be age appropriate. So it needs to be developmentally sound. In this circumstance, for Carrie's age at age 16, a new unexperienced driver, it was very age appropriate to put that limit in place that she's not allowed to have other people in the car with her for a year. The second one, is it explainable? It was explainable, meaning that it made sense under the circumstance, that it fit that circumstance beautifully, actually, because it's really around her safety and the safety of others. And then number three, consistent. Am I being consistent in holding the limit with her? because when I'm not consistent, it confuses the limit. So I did check all those guidelines. So what ended up happening was, I knew at that moment that I needed to really uphold the limit and she's just kind of checking in with me to see what I would do. So number one was to always acknowledge her feelings. So I said to her, wow, sounds so fun and exciting yeah. to drive your friend to lunch with you, even if it's a block away. Just one block. How fun <laughs> at high school. You know, sounds like just a, a very exciting time. And number two is to restate the limit kindly. And I did. Remember, Carrie, the agreement was that you would not take anybody in the car with you for a year, except for your sisters. Number three would be to ask her an empowering question. So I asked her, hmm, I wonder what you'll do. <laughs> and she paused for a few moments <laughs> and she said to me, you know, mommy, I'll just go drive and pick up lunch and then I'll bring it back to school and we'll just have lunch together on the grass. And I said, okay, great, great idea. Now, did she really follow that? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't check. However, I always assumed and thought, gee, why would she ask me if she wasn't trying to hold the mm -hmm. limit and she just wanted some support around that? Yeah. After all, she was only 16. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so what we've been seeing throughout many years now, but especially now, is electronics or screen time is really getting out of hand and because the the what we, our guidelines for the limits is not being upheld properly so uh, reasonable limits on on screen time is not happening so is it age appropriate for children to be on their 
on their iPad two, three hours? No. But that's what's happening. And that's what uh, confuses the limit. Is it explainable? Is it reasonable for a kid to have so many hours or so many minutes every day of, the, of being on an iPad or on, on their phone so much? No, it's not. And are you being consistent with with the limit that you've imposed with your child on on the screen time? And what we're seeing over and over again, it's willy nilly. It's all over the place. And what parents will do is use it as leverage, though. Use the screen time as leverage. So they will they will say, if you um, be nice to your sister today, we will. You can have more screen time. Uh, but you. You use it as a punishment. You hit your sister yesterday. You can't have any screen time today. So when we do that, or when parents do that, it really confuses the limit, and it's all over the place, and parents are struggling with that. So for more information on limits, please visit our website, parentingfromtheheart.com, and check out and order our book, Parent Shift, 10 Universal Truths That Will Change the Way You Raise Your Kids. And now we send you off on your parenting journey with love. And we do so from the bottom bottom of of our our hearts. hearts. See you next time. Bye. Bye.